Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Monteo. I am a filmmaker from Los Angeles, California. I own a company called Unified Pictures, and we do mainly live action movies. We've done about 21 of them, and these are some of the titles. Um, in addition to that, we just started production on our first animated feature called The Ark and the Aardvark, which is directed by John Stevenson, who directed Kung Fu Panda. We also started uh, developing for television. We uh, acquired the license to Vampire Hunter D, and we are developing that as an animated series for TV. And in addition to that, we just published our very first comic book of Vampire Hunter D. Thank you. So a little bit about my background, my uh, various skills, why, why I call myself a filmmaker is I've worked in all of these things uh, in multiple projects. I've worked as a producer, which is basically running production, making sure people are on schedule and making sure you're meeting your deadlines and all the money and all that other stuff. Uh, director of photography, I've uh, shot and produced uh, numerous commercials and videos and all different kinds of stuff. Uh, I've worked as an editor, I've worked as a post supervisor, I've worked as a composer, I've scored over 80 movies. Um, worked as a sound designer, but where the big chunk of my work for like the last 21 years that I've been doing this has been in visual effects, working as a, uh, mainly as an artist and a supervisor. So back in the day, <laughs> so when I moved out to Los Angeles to work in the film business, these were the ways we acquired our imagery. I was working in a lot of film and television, so it was all the high-end sorts of cameras. So we have our Panavisions, our Airflexes, and our Mitchell cameras for high speed. Uh, cut to about 10 years later, HD comes about, and uh, now we're shooting on the Sony Sinalta, the RED cameras, uh, Canon uh, C300s, and what we used to shoot most of our movies, which is the Aeroflex uh, Airy Alexa. And all that time, the delivery method for the content we were creating was uh, for movies, television, and then uh, direct-to-video, Netflix, that kind of thing. I also did a lot of work with this guy right here. It's a friend of mine, Sam Macaroni. He is a famous YouTube guy. And let me show you his reel and some of the work that we did for the YouTube thing. And then I'll get into talking about why I'm talking about the VR stuff. So you get the idea. <laughs> so about uh, just a little under two years ago, we got a call from a company that had a technology that they wanted to check out to uh, start making new kinds of movies, and that company was Jaunt. Um, they gave us two cameras and basically said, go out and make stuff. So <laughs> subsequently, I immediately freaked out because all of a sudden we have this weird sort of distorted 360 image, and I have no idea how I'm even going to deal with that. Virtual reality, they were calling it. Now, instead of shooting all those traditional cameras, we're shooting with all these really crazy cameras, the Ozo, the Jaunt One, 
the red camera. This is the Google Jump. Uh, that's the Lytros, which I haven't worked with, and I don't know very many people who have at this point. But the uh, these particular cameras are what I spend a lot of my time working with. Now, instead of viewing stuff in theaters, people are viewing it on a headsets, which I think is going to be a trend that's going to change because right now, being attached to all of these wires is uh, not ideal, but it's the only way to do it currently. We all got pretty comfortable with the, you know, just the basic video window. And now we got to deal with this. This is weird distorted 360. You can see everything. So the question was, how do we get effects in here? This is an example. I'll, I'll go ahead and show you uh, some of the, the features of Skybox in just a second. But this is just kind of how we layer stuff together. Um, what you're looking at is the full equirectangular. So you're seeing everything kind of unwrapped from the sphere. Let me see here. Some 3D animation. This is just a, a view of one of my comps. It's a little bit out of order. but. Uh, some of these composites that you're looking at are, can be up to 70 to 80 layers. And we're working in stereo, so that's a left eye and right eye. So you're talking a couple hundred layers that it has to deal with. So what you're looking at here, th so this is what basically you see through the headset. So you're dealing with a full unwrapped image, but you have to kind of pay attention to where the viewer is going to look and uh, try to make your most impactful stuff happen in that area. Okay, so I heard somebody touch on this earlier, and this is just a technique, and this is not really anything that's uh, too difficult to do, but a lot of people seem to think it's this really technical thing. When we shot this, we actually had the whole crew standing here, and somebody had touched on the uh, clean plates earlier, and what you can see is when you have your crew, as long as you shoot a clean plate, you can get rid of everybody. And this is just an example of adding some effects. So that's just the effect. I kind of grayed out everything so you can kind of see how that fits into the world. And that was all generated in 3D Studio Max. My pipeline. We do all of our editorial on Premiere. Uh, once, it's actually pre a combination of com Premiere and Skybox. So uh, Sam, my partner in this, actually does all the cutting. And what he does is he re the footage to uh, face the direction we want. What he does is then gives me the full edit, and then I can actually, through Premiere, through uh, Dynamic Link, bring everything to After Effects and do all my work. Um, the other thing in my uh, 2D pipeline is Mocha, which I'm also beta testing Mocha VR, which will allow you to do tracking and roto in full 360. Uh, for 3D animation, I'm using 3D Studio Max for uh, 3D camera tracking, synth eyes, and we render in V-Ray using a stereo pair camera with a 360 degree uh, field of view. So I'm just going to show you this. This is the making of something that we're working on. I don't have the full piece to show right now. We're about two and a half months uh, out of finishing it. Um, and then I'll show you some examples of some of the stuff that I'm doing. And then I'll open up Skybox and I'll show some of the stuff that I'm uh, working with now with the new version 2. Uh, about two and a half months ago, we went out to the Mojave Desert and we shot a uh, project called Wastelanded, and it's about a two and a half minute piece. We shot it where we mounted the camera to uh, vehicles, we mounted it to a drone, um, and we got some really, really interesting stuff. It's all in 3D, um, and I'm in the process right now of sorting through the post, adding all the effects, uh, and like I said, we have about two and a half more months of production because I'm doing the whole thing myself. <laughs> so here's a little making of, and then I'll kind of, whoops, and I'll kind of show you. not cool at all. Okay, we're yeah, we're out of here. It is 11.45. We've heard the winds are going to pick up miserably today, but I think that we're going to make our day. That car has been rigged with a roll bar to flip. These other cars are all here because they're awesome. 
So what is this here? This here's a pipe ramp, so you drive your vehicle up this for effect, and it'll flip you, hopefully to the right spot, your trunk for ease on the driver. <laughs> and it goes in the air and does loop-to-loops, all sorts of good stuff. <laughs> for the record, we spent a lot of money on this shoot. And you can actually see that we have two cameras placed, two bozos, so we got it from two different angles. So we decided at the last minute to build a rig that goes on the back of this buggy. So we're traveling on the back of it with the rocket launcher guy, watching all the cars chase all the other cars. So I'm gonna call cut if uh, if the dust is blowing into the camera, and otherwise we're just gonna do a long run with guns and flames and everything. when it goes all the way in, uh -huh. so you can call cut. So the idea is that the audience is in the car with the actors, and so we couldn't shoot it out there in the desert, so we came up with this ridiculous contraption. Do you want to roll a test? Yeah. <laughs> hey, recommend. So the girls are captive, they're like, get me out of here. Cut. Cut. Uh, I can cut from right here? Yeah, uh, Yeah, you can. Cut. Okay, so uh, like I said, Wastelanded, we were about two and a half months away from finishing post-production, but I can show you a couple of the shots. They're still in process. We're not at all done with anything yet. But uh, these are some of, the, some of the things that I have to do in the equi-rectangular world um, is cleanup and like getting rid of rigs. So... For instance, here, and this is only the left eye, we actually have a stereo pair, so both of these are completely different because you have to deal with the uh, separation. But painting out the rig, painting out the shadows. Um, whoops. Let me come back here. Also, if you look in here, I've, I've, these are some of the effects. We added some tracers and some uh, other things that are being shot at the car. And the missile. The missile is all digital as well, added in uh, 3D Studio Max. Here's another example. Uh, once again, not a completely finished shot, but this is a work in progress. Uh, getting rid of the drone, adding in the tracer fire, the sparks, and the dust hits that hit the car. Um, this shot in particular is extremely difficult. I also have another 3D track that I did on the shot where we're going to add some explosions that kind of, you kind of fly through. Um, this is difficult in the fact that it's very wobbly, and it's about a minute and a half long. So it's a very, very long shot. But in 3D, this looks very cool because all of this stuff is popping out at you. It's very uh, Viewmaster. Also getting rid of the helicopter uh, shadows as well, which is, you know, you probably spend more time doing the cleanup on these. Also, the windows of the car have been added and tracked into the shot as well. I'm just gonna show you this really quick. This is just a, a grayed out version so you can kind of see the effects isolated a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do after this is I'm gonna talk about uh, Skybox 2 and Skybox Composer. And I'll just give you a little brief demo on that and how we're kind of using it. Because it's gonna really change the way, even the, the uh, way that we're doing this right now with the newer tool set, it makes it a, about 10 times easier. Okay, you get the idea. Okay. So I just about two weeks ago started beta testing uh, Skybox 2. And one of the things I'm most excited about, because it all was working anyways, but was the workflow of something called Skybox Composer. And I'm just going to show you just a really quick, because I, I can spend hours doing this stuff. But um, with Skybox Composer, everything when you used to use Extractor and you had to go from different angles, it, it was pretty time consuming. And you had to create multiple comps. With uh, Skybox Composer, I can take my, my comp, and so with the setup, it's going to ask you what you want to do, what your comp width is, and what aspect ratio you want to work in. This is pretty important because you still have your one-to-one, -one, but you also have 4.3 and you have 69. And this is just a way to view it in the viewer so you can lay your elements in. 
I usually stick with the defaults. And what it does is it creates another comp, and I can just take my camera and rotate it around. So let's say I wanted to, right here, oops, go ahead and add an explosion in the sky. Actually, I'll add an explosion on the building. I'll take that back. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just drop it in there, and I make it a 3D layer. Now it's a 3D layer that exists in the scene. Um, if I wanted to, let's say, go ahead and put it up on this building over here, I can now take this layer. Oops. And I'll throw a key on it in just a second. Um, I can now just take this layer and move it over to that building and rotate it. And I'll show you why this is so cool in a second, because if you're like me and you're doing 360 work and you're doing visual effects heavy stuff where you have to add lots and lots and lots of layers, it can get pretty tedious if you have stuff going on all around you. So let me just bring this explosion up to some place where we can see it a little bit. So now it's on this building, right? And I'll go ahead and just add a quick key. We'll just do a color range. This isn't going to be perfect because it's just for a demo. But there you go, our explosion keyed. What's great about this is now I go back to my, my skybox. Hear me. And you're going to have the proper distortion on your explosion. And it's going to lay it in exactly the way you need it. So now it's here. And what's great about this is this is my sort of my output comp, but it only generated that one layer. So um, it doesn't affect your underlying layer. I can always go back in here, and I can rotate my camera around again. And I can go, hey, I want, like, let's say, another explosion over this guy. Whoops. Uh, we'll use this one, right? Uh, let me see. Sky. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and dump that in. I'm going to make it a 3D layer. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push it back in Z space. I'm going to bring it up in the sky. And I'll go ahead and I'm just going to uh, let's come here. I'm just going to take this effect and copy it and give it a quick key. Let's see here. And we'll bring this up so you can actually see the explosion, right? So this is above his head. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up just a little bit more. And this is, this is what's so cool, because like before, where I had to make different camera angled comps to put my objects in, now it's there. Has proper distortion, has everything you want in there. Everything sits in there exactly the way it want, you want it. And again, having it as its own layer means that I can come in here and I can take other composites and other layers and insert them in between. So let's say I wanted the mothership. Um, I can easily insert that in there, and now I can start stacking my layers. And anything that's a similar layer where I want it, it's all going to be part of that same composite. And you can keep just stacking stuff on top of uh, each other. Is there any questions? Does it help you with your workflow? Like, OK, so the way this helps me with my workflow, thank you, um, is where it used to, where if I wanted something to happen, let's say, behind me, I had to make a separate skybox to do the stuff behind me, especially if I'm doing any sort of 3D camera tracking, any of that. Now I'm doing everything in one window. I'm doing, so no matter what direction I'm looking, I just have to point my camera and make sure my, my layer is angled facing that camera properly. Um, so inserting 2D stuff, and everything we do is tens of, you know, tens of layers. So. Um, it helps me to get my, my layout done in probably about a third of the time. And I can easily sketch stuff out. And I'm seeing it really quickly. And when I have my, uh, my Skybox viewer, I can actually put on the headset then and be able to view it uh, in the headset, which is the way you want to view stuff. You never want to just look at it on the screen and go, it's perfect. You have to actually put on the headset, because if you're not seeing the headset, you're not seeing it properly. So any questions? Well, my name is Tim Monteo. Uh, I could be reached if anybody wants to get a hold of me. I'm at timon at unifiedpictures.com. I know it's hard to remember. <laughs> <laughs>